today. Holy Spirit, come. Come and have your way in lives and bodies. I thank you right now already. You're healing and touching, delivering, bringing life. Let these words, Lord, resonate in our hearts and bear good fruit, I ask, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Romans 1.17, who knows what it says? The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. We just celebrated uh, last year the 500-year anniversary of the Reformation, the revelation of justification by faith. Praise the Lord, we're the just who live by faith, not the just who live by feelings. The just, what's that talking about? That's talking about the righteous. Those that are righteous shall live by faith in that they will, they will live in faith that they have been made righteous. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You'll notice there's no anxiety, fear, or condemnation in that definition of the kingdom righteousness peace and joy when you know that you're righteous when you're applying faith to what Christ has done you can have peace it's actual experiential reality where you're not afraid you're not feeling guilty you're not experiencing shame or, and the Bible tells us in first John 3 that even even if our hearts condemn us he's greater than our hearts but if our hearts don't condemn us we have confidence toward God and whatever we ask we receive so it's a big deal that we believe what the Lord is saying that we would believe in his righteousness now, a lot of people know this theoretically, but God's wanting you to get it more than just a theory. He's wanting you to experience the peace he wants to release into your heart. And that comes by applying this scripture, the just, the righteous shall live by faith. It means you have to believe what's happened to you. Hallelujah. Tells us in Romans 8, 3, for God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish. Because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. In other words, we weren't able to measure up to the standard of righteousness that was required to be in fellowship with God. Nobody was able to be righteous enough, make themselves holy or pure enough to be joined to God. God is light. Light can have no fellowship with darkness. He's absolutely pure, absolutely holy. God can't yoke his son unequally. And so in order for us to be united with God in fellowship, brought back into the glorious union that he desired for us from the beginning, we had to be born again. We had to get a brand new nature. And we had to become as righteous as God. So praise the Lord, Christ, who was without sin, he became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ. This is glorious, divine exchange, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. We know this, you all know this. But it's knowing it, knowing it with your head is one thing. Believing it in your heart is another. And this is what it looks like to be the just who live by faith. I'm going to read you a passage from Romans 6. Who likes the book of Romans? I'll tell you, that book is so astonishing in its entirety. It's such a little picture of the whole message from beginning to end. And it just demonstrates how, oh, we desperately needed a savior. Whoa, what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Romans 6, starting at verse 5, says this. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. Say was. Our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Hooray! For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, did we die with Christ? 
Yes, hooray, was, did happen, yay. We believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ. Hallelujah. It means that we're not achieving death to self, but we are believing that it happened when he was crucified. It means we're coming into agreement with what God did. If I could deal with my flesh, I wouldn't have needed the cross. So I have to reckon myself dead. That is, every day, come to God and say, I'm reminding myself of the truth. Thank God I've been set free from me. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Catherine died, was crucified. Hooray, I agree with you, God. You know, sin is so deceitful. It comes on the outside and tries to make you believe that, oh, it hasn't really happened. You're still a bit evil, still a bit of yuck in you. And then you live in condemnation, trying to get the yuck out when you could never do it in the first place. This is the works mentality, the the deceitfulness of sin that would try to get you to believe that you are not the righteousness of God in Christ. But this is something that maybe one day, here's a carrot out here, you might achieve it one day if you try hard enough. The good news of the gospel is that it's better than we feel like we deserve. You waking up today going, okay, God, here I am. I'm feeling a bit hypocritical, so here I am, I'm going to sing. Here I am, I love you, oh, I feel like a hypocrite. He's there going, hey, it's no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives in you. Who are you calling a hypocrite? He's saying, as I am, so are you in this world. Oh, but God, you know, I, had a, I was cranky with my, my spouse yesterday or had a bad attitude or I had a bad thought yesterday. The Bible tells us that if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you've gone, oh God, that was bad, I shouldn't have done that, sorry God. You don't get to sit in the naughty corner for de- the next two weeks to pay for that because if you could pay for it, you could then take some of the glory for it. This is where the just shall live by faith really kicks in. When you wake up the next day going, oh, that was bad, sorry, I know, I shouldn't have done that, sorry, God, thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. You have to then apply this truth to your own heart and to your own life and go, God, even though I don't feel righteous, even though I know I don't deserve it, I receive by faith the revelation that you became sin so I could become righteous, that you have cleansed me from all unrighteousness, that though I haven't paid for this sin, it has already been paid in full, and I receive by faith the revelation, the truth that I am as righteous as God, that you are better than I feel like I deserve, that there is nothing that hinders me from manifesting the fullness of who you are today. I haven't earned the right to manifest the reality of who you are. I haven't earned the right to be as you are in this world. But here's the truth. I believe it because you're better than I deserve. You're better than I feel. You are my God and you've given me the faith of Jesus Christ. And I apply by faith the reality that I am righteous. Hallelujah. When we get it, you know, the the atonement is very clear. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our... The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. It's the fullness of the gospel. That's it. Bang, gospel. That's what Jesus came to do. Bruised for... uh, Wounded for our transgressions, which is sin, if you look it up in the Hebrew. He was punished for our sins, so we don't have to punish ourselves. Hooray! He was bruised, crushed for our iniquities. Now, that's a different word to transgressions. Iniquities actually means our crookedness. 
Jesus came to do more than what the blood of bulls or goats could do. He came to actually take away everything about us that was crooked, to make our crooked places straight. Yay! Hooray! That's everything about you you didn't like. Gone. Oh, but I was a bit unkind yesterday. Praise the Lord. You've given it to him. You've received his mercy. What do you look like? You're not defined by what you, what you did. You're defined by what he did. Hallelujah. You're defined by who he is. Praise the Lord. And we must believe. Now, having a, a brand new clean heart, a new nature, doesn't mean you don't have the capacity to sin. Adam was without a sinful nature when he was created, was he not? Yet he still had the capacity to sin. You still have the capacity to sin, but you have power to make the right choice. Hallelujah. If you do sin, praise the Lord. God's there going, already paid for it. Now come to me and believe that as you exchange that, you have the right to be cleansed from a guilty conscience. Hallelujah. We have this glorious Father who is with us and for us and helping us. Um, but I believe this message, as simple and as basic as it is, is fundamental for us to walk in freedom to walk in peace and to be the light of the world. The church for too long has been crippled by the belief that somehow I don't measure up. Crippled by the belief that the lie of the enemy, that what Christ did doesn't fully apply to you because you don't feel like you deserve it. The good news of the gospel is that we just need to humble ourselves like little children and say, thank you, God. I receive what I don't feel like I deserve. By faith, I receive the righteousness of God, that I'm a new creation. Hallelujah. So every day, we need to speak the truth about ourselves and start declaring what God says. Hallelujah. We need to be speaking to our hearts and saying, praise the Lord, I'm as righteous as God. That's a challenge for some of you, but it's basic Gospel 101. I'm as righteous as God. Don't know if everyone else will say that, you might think. But hey, it's not what everyone else says, it's what God says. Because if you'll believe it, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's not going to cause you to, to behave badly. When you are there going, thank you God, I'm as righteous as you. Thank you, God, that you said that if any man's a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's because he's looked in the mirror and then walked away and forgot what he looked like. So, Lord, I, I choose to remember what I look like today. Thank you, God. You said I look like you now. That as you are, so am I in this world. So what are you like? You're altogether wonderful. You're patience personified. You are love personified. You're kindness personified. You're absolute peace. Therefore, I am patience personified. I am flowing through my veins. It's part of my DNA. I am filled with the peace of God. I am kindness personified. I'm not trying to be kind. I'm not an orphan on the outside trying to be like him. I have been made like him by the supernatural regeneration of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <gasps> You see, if we'll dare to believe this, you're not going to then have the next thought, well, now, how could I push the boundaries and live in sin? You'll be on your face thanking God with tears of joy, saying, thank you, God, you set me free from me. Thank you for the privilege now of walking as a new creation. Today, Lord, you've laid up good works in advance for me to do. Hallelujah. I haven't qualified myself, but you qualified me. And I'm in agreement with what your son has done. Hallelujah. I've been set free from sin. I've been set free from self. And I've been set free to rule and reign with you. Hallelujah. To do those things <laughs> that you did and greater works than these. You know, I believe this fundamental message of the gospel is something that the, the church is being invited into with a freshness today. Those who would dare to believe 
that they have become as righteous as God will begin to walk as the righteous who are as bold as lions. Will be, will be those who won't walk around as victims, won't be tempted to um, live in a hangover of guilt and shame. You know, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. He didn't go into the wilderness to deal with his sinful flesh. He was fasting and praying, just preparing for the glorious ministry God had laid up for him. And then he was hungry. I mean, I get hungry after two days of fasting. I'm like really desperately hungry. 40 days. He was hungry. Physical need. He had a genuine physical, natural need. Temptation often comes as an opportunity to fulfill a natural need in an unholy way. So the enemy came and he said, hey, look at those stones. Don't they, they look a lot like bread, don't they? You're hungry. Well, let's turn them into bread. Why don't you just turn them into bread? And Jesus recognized this was a deception from the enemy. And, and even though he would have felt a natural desire for bread, he didn't get into condemnation going, I can't believe I felt that temptation. You see, if he didn't feel it, if it had no pull at all, if it wasn't any form of natural desire, then it wouldn't have been temptation. The enemy is trying to convince him to fulfill a genuine desire in an unholy way. But when he left the wilderness, he didn't spend the next uh, you know, several weeks thinking, I better go back into the wilderness because, you know, to pay for that temptation I felt. He didn't walk around feeling guilty for the fact that he had been, he, that, that temptation had approached him. But, you know, we often, having been tempted, wear a shame and a guilt. I felt that. I wanted to do that. Oh, I must be terrible. I must have to try and deal with myself. And we live in the hangover of guilt. Has anyone ever done that? If we recognize that sin is an external force trying to deceive you to forget who you've become, if we, if we don't believe that, we'll start trying to deal with ourselves. What's wrong with you, you horrible person? Why are you feeling that? Why are you thinking that? The enemy comes just as he came to Christ. He comes against you. But you can rise up and say, thank you, God. That's not who I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You supply all of my needs in a holy way. Hallelujah. I'll look to you for my help. Praise the Lord. And just because I felt that desire doesn't mean anything about my identity. It doesn't mean I have, I have evil desires. I thank you, God, that you've given me power now to walk in holiness. I think a lot of the church walks around continually in condemnation and fear because you felt an evil desire. Desire is, sin is conceived when we, two parties come into agreement. You might feel it, but unless you actually come into partnership with sin, sin doesn't get conceived. Unless you go, yes, I'll have that, that looks good. You haven't yet come into sin, you've just felt it. But even if you do sin, does that mean then you are an evil person? If you've been born again, if you sin, you come to God and you say, thank you, God, for forgiveness. I give you that sin. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I repent. I believe in the power of repentance. But it doesn't change the identity that God's given you. As you give it to him, he says, I make you clean. Hallelujah. This is the truth of who you are. Praise the Lord. Now, if you, if you persisted in that sin, you'd be in real big trouble. But the Lord has given you power to recognize, hallelujah, I've been set free from sin. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm not going to buy into the lie that I have no, no power here. I'm not going to buy into the lie that I'm identified with this, that this is somehow coming from an evil heart. Thank you, God, I've been given a clean heart. Thank you, God, I've got the motives of Christ. I'm not going to believe the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. And you begin to fight. God's looking for us to fight with the word of truth with the word of righteousness, hallelujah, to begin to say, no, no, I'm not going to slink back into that shame. I'm not going to slink back into that old identity. I'm going to believe what God says about me, hallelujah. 
We are saved by grace through faith. The whole atonement is simply received by faith through knowing him. Hallelujah. When you know him, it's easy to trust him. Hallelujah. Because he's consistently kind and consistently good. I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to learn and recognize that every day, every part of the atonement is available to you by faith. That includes forgiveness of sin, a brand new nature, peace, and divine health. Hallelujah. When you were born again, did you do anything other than respond to the invitation and receive by faith the gift of righteousness? We are saved not by works, hallelujah, lest anyone should boast, but by simply humbling in ourselves and receiving <gasps> by faith, <laughs> forgiveness, freedom, a new heart, clean heart. In the same way, we can have divine health not by trying to figure out what do I do to get this, but by humbling ourselves and saying, I don't feel like I deserve it, but I receive it because you died and you were punished, whipped and beaten so I could have it. I receive it. <laughs> Thank you for it. Start calling yourself healed. Start declaring, I'm the healed of the Lord. Start seeing it and saying it. Start... Instead of saying, oh, I'm sick, I'm tired, I don't know why I'm so tired, I'm all tired all the time. You know, the doctors have done their tests, but I can't figure it out, they don't know, there must be something wrong with me. Instead of buying into those lies, start declaring, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I feel fantastic. I walk in divine health all the time. I'm getting healthier and stronger and fitter every day. Hallelujah. Calling those things that be not as though they are. I'm resting into the reality. I'm going to agree with God. He says, I'm the healed of the Lord, so I'm healed. You said that the redeemed of the Lord say so, so I'm saying so. I'm redeemed. And my redeeming, the, the redeeming grace of Christ is clear. It's a, it's a full gospel atonement. Hallelujah. Freedom from sin. Freedom from self. Freedom from fear and anxiety. It's, it's supernatural peace and it's divine health. Hallelujah. Bang, done. Not no, divine health is not some additional bit that you, know, you could go after if you wanted. It's actually part of the standard package. Amen. Bang, this is it. There it is. It's yours. You don't have to try. You don't have to do anything to have it. You just got to humble yourself and begin to agree with God. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but... The Lord delivers him from them all. We have powerful weapons that he's given us. They're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. The enemy will try. Now, if you're suffering from sickness or pain, you don't need to feel any shame. You know, if the word of God is true, which it is, he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That means if you're afflicted, you, you might, might well just be righteous. But I hear people going, what do you think's caused this? What have I done? What window have I opened? Where have I gone wrong that I've become sick? You look like God. He, you are the apple of his eye. And so the enemy hates you and wants to destroy you. He tries to throw sickness at you. But instead of going, oh, I must have done something wrong, maintain the revelation that you're the righteousness of God in Christ, that the enemy is trying to afflict you and you've been given power to overcome all the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. The, the word of God is effective and powerful to the pulling down of strongholds, that his name is above every other name and that you can fight with his word. Hallelujah. You know, where else are you going to go? He alone has the words of life. I remember having um, vocal nodules once. I, I used to worship lead, preach and prophesy um, over loud music and I blew my voice trying to do everything. And I would talk like this. And it was awful. I was so, dis so discouraged that you put the camera down your nose and say, oh, you've got a nodule. Well, you'll have to go to speech therapy and you know, maybe we might have to operate. And 
I was so awful. I was in pain. I couldn't sing properly. My range went from four octaves to about half an octave. And I talked like this, couldn't preach, couldn't sing. And would get so frustrated that I have to hand over money for speech therapy. I'm like, oh, I hate this. And then the Lord just challenged me. He said, I need you to call those things that be not as though they are. So I went, okay. I have a beautiful singing voice and my voice is strong and clear. <laughs> wake up the next day, it was sore, it was uncomfortable. I have a beautiful singing voice and my voice is strong and clear. I did it every day for three months. One day I just woke up, bang, it was all gone. Why didn't it happen the next day? I don't know. I'm not going to try and figure out. But this is what I do know. God is my healer. And I will trust him for his wholeness. I've never yet had another problem with that. I've seen it happen over and over and over and over and over again. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. I'm not suggesting that you don't acknowledge uh, that you have pain like oh, okay, something might be painful you might be in sick you might be suffering with an ailment I, I think doctors and nurses are a wonderful thing my dad's a doctor my daughter's a nurse we love the medical profession but what I am saying is that you you declare a higher reality okay okay this is what they're telling me but whose report will I believe I'll believe the report of the Lord that says I'm the healed of the Lord, that I can call those things that be not as though they are. I can come against this knowing it's an external thing that's coming against the body of Christ. And thank you, God, I will stand on your word and I will believe. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Now today, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to encourage many of you here today to begin to start making decrees to make declarations about who you are and what, because when you know who you are and you come into agreement with God and you start loving yourself like he loves you, you then enlarge your capacity to love everybody else. If you're to love one another as you love yourself and you, yet you don't agree with God about the righteousness he's given you, you're going to be judging everybody else just the same way that you judge yourself. If you believe yourself to be righteous, forgiven, having clean motives, the motives of Christ, then instead of looking at everybody else with suspicion, you'll be looking at them and being able to love them like you love yourself. This is more important than we realize. This isn't about you feeling good. This is about you being able to pray, pray prayers that will change nations. This is about you being able to operate supernaturally in the power of the living Christ. Hallelujah. I tell you, the church of God is in for a glorious awakening. It's waking up and it's waking up here in Queensland. I tell you, the world is waking up to watch and see and to learn. Hallelujah. What the Lord is doing in the body of Christ as people are humbling themselves like little children and simply believing. You know, I believe that this is a house of miracles. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, this is a house of miracles. And you're going to see exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask, hope, or imagine. I see the gift of faith like an ocean in this place. <laughs> Cover it. The Lord's just showing me a vision right now like an ocean covering this place, the gift of faith saturating this place so that everyone who comes in will be overwhelmed by the faith in the room. And I believe that the Spirit of God is saying that there, even as you have loved your children here, the Lord says that you're going to be known for a childlike faith that is supernatural, pure, clean, childlike, and powerful, that the Lord says they shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I see it. I see it happening here, that it's going to be an uh, across-the-board thing, that you're going to be known as a well of healing in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, where people come and they experience the goodness of God and it'll be just simple and delightful, not complicated, simple, delightful. They just come in, woo, jump in the well, jump in the ocean and come out holy, clean, righteous, healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Papa, for your grace.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Won't you come? Well, thank you, Lord, with your presence right here. I thank you here right now with us. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Come and. What a wonderful service we've just had. We've experienced the presence of God. And I know His presence. And I know Him personally. And I want to ask if you've been watching this, do you know Jesus personally? I want to invite you to become a part of the family of God. I'd love to ask you to pray with us. If you've watched the service and you say, but you know what? I don't know Jesus, but I would love to know him. This prayer is for you. Salvation is now. Don't put it off. Don't leave it. Come along with me and pray this with me and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take care of me, Lord. Wash me clean of my sin. Bring me into your family, Lord. Make me the head and not the tail. Take me from darkness into light, from sickness into health. Thank you, Jesus. You paid the price that I may have eternal life with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. But more than that, I can live a successful life here on earth. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that and, and you'd like to, we'd love to be able to actually send you some resources. If you would like that, please contact us via the phone or email. We'd love to get some things into your hand. And if you're in the local area, we'd love for you to join us for our next Sunday service. We're open. All are welcome. God bless. And if you prayed that, welcome to the family.